But this is just a quick look at my open source oscilloscope development board named Scopy MVP. In the centre of the board, we have a Zinc 7014S system on chip and FPGA. Uh, so this is an ARM Cortex A9 processor with an Arctic 7 FPGA fabric closely coupled to it. The FPGA is attached to 256 megabytes of DDR3 memory running 533 megahertz. On the left hand side of the FPGA we have the HMCAD 1511ADC. This ADC samples are up to 1 giga sample per second at 8 bit resolution. The ADC is clocked from a 1 gigahertz PLL just above it. The red LED there is indicating PLL lock. In the bottom left hand corner of the board we have an STM32 F0 microcontroller. This little Cortex M0 microcontroller is responsible for some core system management tasks. It sequences power rails, monitors for brownout conditions, interfaces with the ADC and PLL, and monitors a few temperature sensors. On the right hand side of the board we have the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 Plus with the enhanced heat spreader. This runs the main application software, outputs the HDMI video to the monitor, and receives data from the Zinc SOC over the camera interface. At the top right hand side of the board we have a series of buck converters that produce the 5V3 and 1V8 supplies required for the compute module, ADC, PLL and other devices on the board. In addition, nearer to the FPGA we have a 1V5 supply and a VTT supply for the DDR3 memory, and a 1V0 supply for the FPGA core. Towards the bottom of the PCB we have a few debug and programming headers including UART for the STM32 and the Zinc. The board operates from a 12 volt power input and draws approximately 10 watts in operation when acquiring and displaying waveforms. So I'll just start the application. It's still a little buggy and it mostly works. <coughs> it's running a development build right now where um, it implements a kind of history, a rolling history buffer, which is the feature that uh, Dave was complaining about in the signaling scopes, which is enabled by default. It's essentially where if you've got uh, a low memory depth selected, it can use the entire RAM of the instrument to um, record a waveform, uh, his, uh, the history of a waveform. So, um, for instance, we're using 1.2 kilopoints of memory right now. Uh, for this wave this time base, um, but you could you know, potentially record several hundred thousand of those waveforms in the uh, 256 megabytes of RAM that I have available. Um, Try to ignore the occasional blinking, that's a known bug. I, I do know what's causing that, I haven't got around to fixing it yet. Um, it's just caused by it, it missing um, trigger samples occasionally and uh, just dropping the entire waveform if the first trigger is missing. Um, I've just got this connected up to my signal generator there, uh, which is just one of those FieldTech FY6800 um, DDS signal generators, so it's just uh, running a modulated sine wave pattern, um, and I can, uh, can change the time base, so that's running at 50 nanoseconds per division, and if you see, look at the corner, we're getting about 22, 23,000 waveforms per second. That's actually measuring the real performance of the render and acquisition engines. Now, that's basically spinning uh, at 100% on one ARM core on the Raspberry Pi because it's a software renderer, so it's just using as many resources as it can get from the ARM. Um, but if this was done on the FPGA or on the GPU, I believe the performance could be considerably higher. Uh, certainly the FPGA itself is cap capable of capturing well over 200,000 waveforms a second um, if there's nothing at the end uh, it needs to render. Um, so it can change the time base. Um, the application isn't the most stable at times, especially because I've recently modified the software, but uh, you can switch the time base there. Um, you can change the colour of the waveform. And because this is a software renderer, obviously everything is is controlled by Python, so this is all running on the Raspberry Pi. So it's it's pretty real time. It's I think it's acceptably real time for for most applications. Um, I don't know any oscilloscope out there that actually lets you change waveform colors. This is more for just showing off what you can do with a software renderer. Um, whether you actually want to change the waveform color uh, in real life, the UI isn't updating the color for some reason, but. Whether you'd want to uh, change the waveform colour in real life is probably debatable, but uh, I suppose there are some applications for that. 
so this is just showing a modulated sine wave. Um, you can also switch the display to use a rainbow palette. So there you can see the um, areas with more information and them are a different colour on the spectrum. So it's wearing more towards a pinky blue colour there. Perhaps the modulated sine wave isn't the best demonstration of that. Try and increase the modulation so you can see more. Um, you can change the intensity of the graticule. Um, and then you can change the trigger. So I've got an edge trigger right now. And I can change where it triggers on the waveform. Now this is a digital trigger. It's implemented entirely in the FPGA. There's no comparators on the board. As you can see that's triggering at a different level there. And the trigger is entirely digital. So it's implemented inside the Zinc. Uh, the Zinc is going to receive eight ADC samples of the LVDS ports. Um, so the samples are decoded into a parallel 64-bit bus and any one of those eight samples could generate a trigger because everything operates on that sort of 125 megahertz clock of eight samples at once, which is one eighth of the main clock. Um, it then has to decode based on which sample triggered the soonest, uh, which sample actually generated a valid trigger. Um, and it's doing that to calculate the position, to overlay the waveforms on. So it's, uh, it's quite a, a computationally simple task, but you have to do it very quickly uh, in order to get thousands of waveforms displayed per second. So I initially started with a Hittite development kit and a little custom board that I made to interface this with a Z-Turn Lite FBJ development kit. Uh, the, it's uh, the same zinc FPGA and system on chip that is featured on here. Uh, but I had an enormous uh, number of issues with this connector here. If the camera would do so kindly as to focus on that. Um, yeah, well, anyway, this, this connector here, which is a, a Samtech uh, part, um, and it's used in a lot of FPGA development kits, it's called an FPGA mezzanine connector. Um, and I couldn't get that connected to work right unless it's essentially clamped um, on both sides of the board. I think it's designed to be screwed on to a, a development kit. Um, and I didn't want to mess around with that. I was making a lot of progress with what data I could get out of the ADC, so I decided to just sort of rush into it and actually develop my own board. Um, designed this in Circuit Maker and got it made by a company in Sweden. Uh, and it uh, worked more or less first time. There are a few mod wires as you can probably see. I did design it with a sort of modular concept in mind. So I put these um, these connectors here intended for an analog front end board. Um, I, in the end I decided just to make a simple AC coupled analog front end. So I'm using a SATA connector to carry the analog data in to the board. Um, and then on here we've just essentially got a ballon and uh, an op amp to generate the V common voltage for the ballon and it just feeds into the ADC chip. So yeah, it's only an AC coupled front end right now. It needs about five volts peak to peak to actually get something interesting to appear on the screen, uh, but it does work. So anyway, that's just a very quick look at what I've got so far. There are um, a few rough edges and a few bugs, but I think this gem demonstrates the capabilities of the hardware platform and the software platform that I've got here. Um, I want to refine this. I want to make a, a Mark II version of this instrument um, with faster memory bus and possibly drop the Raspberry Pi from it. Um, I don't have any particular objections to using the Raspberry Pi. It's a very inexpensive computational platform and of course it has that camera interface which is crucial to the uh, the implementation of getting data very quickly into another ARM processor to do something with it. Um, and of course it gives us a real Linux operating system. We don't have to fiddle with drivers or anything like that. Um, it's got a real GPU in it to do some of the 2D acceleration and 3D acceleration that you might need um, in a product. Uh, but it is constrained by the fact that everything has to come over that camera bus. So if this did feature something like a Zinc Ultra Scale SOC, um, then obviously the waveform data would be in the same memory space as the um, 
um, display processor, so it wouldn't need to be piping data over a limited bandwidth interface. Uh, but you know, it's, uh, it's still very much uh, a prototype. Um, I'd appreciate any feedback or comments. Um, don't know if this will go anywhere. Right now, it's just a sort of curiosity for me. Uh, but uh, I've been working on this for long enough. I feel like I want to tell some people about it.